but yeah, to your point, generally it's, it's super awkward and it's like, it's crazy. The thing that always sticks with me and that I really had to like adjust to after the first couple times of doing TV is like how fast it happens. Like the band is always like right at the end of the show. It always requires like a ton of work. Like you're there super early sound checking, like way before any of the other guests. But then it's just like, you're so used to like when you're in the studio or something, when it's your gig, you know, you do a take. And if you're like, oh, that wasn't very good. Can we do it again? Like, no problem on TV. It's like, you know, they cut to commercial for whatever reason. They like keep the commercial breaks like off camera, like the exact same time as the actual commercial break. So they finish a bit like it's like, OK, cut to commercial. Everyone scrambles to set up. And then the director is like, OK, you guys ready? One, two, three, go. And it's just like, holy shit. Like, I'm not ready. <laughs> like, it always feels really awkward. And then you at least I don't love being on camera in general and like there's that weird mindset I get into that I think other people get into where you're like feeling people look at you and you can't relax into the music. It's super awkward um, in general. That said, and I think, I, I don't think I'm retconning it when I say this, there was like an immediate level of comfort with me and drugs. And we'd rehearsed a ton the night before. Like I think it was their first time being on TV too. And so they really wanted to get it very dialed. So uh, we, it was very well rehearsed. There's an immediate musical connection and personal connection. And so it was super fun. Paul Schaefer was really, really nice and really fun. And like, it was just also like the, you know, we were doing a really weird horn setup. Like it was me on Barry sax and, and like a, a flugabone, like marching trombone. Mm. And then my friend Kelly on trumpet and I think French horn. And we were both playing through pedals and stuff. It was like a sort of cool, weird horn setup. And like the horn players and Dave Letterman's band got a huge kick out of that. And we're like giving us thumbs up as we were like getting ready to start. It was, it was fun. Did, did Letterman, uh, compliment your drummer's drum set? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, well, I'd have to check the tape, but I think so. <laughs> I think, I, I think so. I think that's, that was like his thing. I mean, I do remember in terms of like, Going back to what I said, like Letterman was a particularly challenging one. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this or, but it's like, it was famously cold in that studio. Mm. Like D David Letterman liked it really cold. I think he, like, like not just like, oh, the air conditioning's on high, like actually like refrigerated. And like he, he felt, I think he or his producers or something had some theory about that kind of temperature creating a certain energy. I, I don't know. But it was really tough for musicians, famously, and it was especially tough for horn players. Like, it was so hard to play in tune. I, and famously, their trombone player, Bones Malone, had a special trombone, I think, for the gig that was like, had a quarter inch of tube cut out so he could play more easily in tune. Like, it was sort of like an unusually tuned trombone that was sort of <laughs> made for that gig. Um, and so, yeah, the, you know, and Letterman, I mean, legendary one of the great comedians voices of my lifetime, but he was sort of famously, especially by that point in his career, like famously standoffish. Mm -hmm. I, I think he was very polite, you know, he shook all our hands and stuff, but there wasn't a kind of like palling around or there wasn't like a sort of chill vibe from him. So yeah, it, it yeah. was like this very literally chilly vibe. Um, and that, created its own kind of discomfort. But again, like I said, the sort of comfort was there with the band and the music and it, it, it went great. So war on drugs these days, mm -hmm. like what size rooms you guys go on tour? What size rooms do you play? Um, it depends on the market, you know, but generally like large theater E vibes, like mm -hmm. I'd say generally like three to 5,000 cap kind of rooms there are places where it gets a little bit bigger and then if it's like a very small market it would obviously be a smaller place um but that's i, I think i they feel like generally the size like i'm trying to think like you know the we played uh uh bill graham i think last time we were in san francisco up by you guys and we've done the like the berkeley greek like that the, the, i mean those are nice mm -hmm. obviously those are those, yeah, are, on those the are those are great venues great yeah. venues but there are those and those even are on the bigger end but those like you know that's sort of a bigger city kind of vibe and then randomly we do really well in belgium and the netherlands i have no idea why i i i've heard all kinds of sociological like socio-cultural theories about why 
but we do like noticeably like a level up and we actually have to play arenas there we play like sports arenas in which which creates a logistical challenge on tour to be honest because we sure. have to be able to scale the the show up for those kind of venues but it's only like two or three shows a tour L- london will be like that kind of venue too usually um but yeah um it's it's that's the way it is for some reason and then i think we're the kind of band that like we're still a little niche you know mm-hmm. it, it for some, so like i i'm sure there's some places where we've never been booked that if we went it would be like we would struggle to feel like I, I'm trying to think of an example, but like a, just a smaller city or we've never gone over to or before my time, the band actually did when they were sort of a, uh, you know, kind of more punk rock touring trio. They went over to Japan, but we've never been to Japan since my time in the band. And I think the reason is like, for whatever reason, we don't think there'd be the kind of uh, we'd be able to play in the big enough venues to support the kind of. Uh, production we need to get over because we tour we also at this point tour with a lot of gear so it's like expensive for us to go places yeah and so um the band and i guess therefore you won a a grammy in 2018 for the deeper understanding record yeah that was wild yeah how'd that feel for you i genuinely it was like shocking we we were i remember even at the time we were like checking out the odds on, you know, there's odds on everything on some website. And like, we were like stunningly low odds. There were like five bands nominated, I think five or six, five, I think, but it was like Metallica was one of the nominees. And I guess they, it was the category was best rock album. And apparently Metallica, though they'd won many Grammys had never won best rock album. So that was like, they were like the odds on favorite, like everyone thought they were going to win. And then I forget who a couple of the other nominees were, maybe Queens of the Stone Age. I don't know, but bands that honestly are sort of had been around for longer than us and certainly sort of were bigger than us. So we just, there was honestly, there was like no thought that we were going to win. Being nominated was awesome. We were like, that's so cool. Never thought that would happen. And like we booked a tour, we were on tour when it happened. We we booked like even our our our, uh, our manager at the time was like, "Do you guys want to like cancel a couple of the shows and like come back to be there?" And we're like, "No, we're, we're not going to wait." Like, what's that? Would, a we <laughs> we don't like the idea of like canceling shows to go to an award show in general. Yeah, that felt kind of lame. But like even even beyond that, we're like, well, it would be it's extra stupid because we're not going to win. Like, and then we were in it was a New Zealand Australia tour. I think we were in New Zealand at the time. And all we were all it was just because the time difference, we were all like, I, th- I feel like we were all waking up. We were, gosh, we were all in our separate hotel rooms and like all of our, our phones started blowing up simultaneously. Like, oh, my God, congratulations. Holy shit. And like we, it, we zero. None of us were waiting for it. We weren't like we got to watch the Grammys to see what happens. Like and then we all started texting each other like, are you getting these messages? Like what the, what just happened? It, it was it was really wild. But of course, it was like it's gratifying. Like none of us certainly do music in order to win Grammys. I, I think anyone who does such a thing, there are probably some people like that out there, but God, they must be lame. Uh, but like, <laughs> it certainly was like, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. It's, it's nice. It, 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 it this sounds like a, a, like a cop out or something, but we, it's like awesome for our parents. You know, yeah, <laughs> like totally. they get to, it, it's sort of a benchmark that like, it's like, Oh, this is kind of a real thing, you know? I yeah. don't know. So in that way, it's cool, but when we're very grateful, but and I've always been curious about this. Do you feel like you noticed any effect it had on the band? Were you suddenly drawing a little bit more, streaming a little bit more? Was there any sort of effect that you noticed? I don't follow the numbers, so I can't answer the second part of that. Whether like streaming numbers changed, I, I don't think so. I it definitely. It wasn't like all of a sudden we got offered shows we'd never gotten before. I my subjective sense is that because we were relatively unknown, it made some people check us out who had never heard of us. It was just sort of a, a publicity thing. Um, but it wasn't like a binary moment where shows were a super certain size, and then the Grammy happened, and then they like noticeably became crazy, or we noticeably got different offers. Not at all. It did. The band has been lucky that there has been like this sort of steady climb. Like when I first joined the band, that record and and part of the reason why I think the band coalesced at that time, we were touring behind a record that did kind of explode a little bit. So there was like, 
there was like a bump up there, but then it's 